Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for being there for us. We, we acknowledge this era as one of tragedy and hardship. And we would ask, oh Lord, that we would be vessels of peace and power and victory. Have your way, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, all. Welcome. I don't want to scare anybody off. So. <laughs> Actually, it's... Amen. So we're cruising through Luke here. We're now at the place where... We're now at the place where we, we are incredibly close to the triumphant entry and all of that. And he has uh, parables up that come pointed. Um, like... You need to not be a hypocrite. You need to honor God. You need to not just be in this for the show, but in this for the distance. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and, and so this is, a, this is a puzzling passage at first look. But remember, he's targeting the hypocritical part of his culture. And that takes us to Luke 16. We're going to try it New Living. Um, anyway. Yeah, uh, new, uh, new Living Version, New Living Translation, NLT, seems to be a, a good read today. Uh, so 16, chapter one, uh, verse 1. Jesus told this story to a man to whom, who had a manager handling his affairs. One day a report came to the manager was wasting his employer's money. Wasting his money. Let's put uh, different ways in different versions. Essentially, he was stealing from his company. It seems like he's stealing from his company. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is the impression that people get up front, but uh, there's another take on this that hopefully we'll get into. Good. Verse 2. So the employer called him in and said, What's this I hear about you? Get your report in order because you are going to be fired. Mm -hmm. The manager thought to himself, Now what? My boss has fired me. I don't have the strength to dig ditches, and I'm too proud to beg. I know what I can do. I can know how I can ensure that I'll have plenty of friends who will give me a home when I'm fired. Verse 5. So he invited each person who owed money to his employer to come and discuss the situation. He asked the first one, how much do you owe him? The man uh, replied, I owe him 800 gallons of olive oil. So the manager told him, take the bill and quickly change it to 400 gallons. And how much do you owe my employer? This is the second one he asked. I owe him 1,000 bushes, bushels of wheat, uh, was his reply. Here the manager said, take the bill and change it to 800 bushels. The rich man had to admire the dishonest rascal for being so shrewd. And it is true that the children of this world are more shrewd in dealing with the world around them than are the children of light. That's one of the bottom line messages here, um, or general, general conclusions or takeaways that he's trying to get across, uh, but not the bottom line. Here's the lesson. Use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. Then when your possessions are gone, they will welcome you into an eternal home. Amen. Interesting line. Okay. If you're faithful in little things, you'll be faithful in large ones. But if you're dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater response. And if you're not faithful with other pe people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? No one can serve two masters, for you will hate the one and love the other. You'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. Okay. Uh, now the Pharisees said, who, do, who dearly loved their money, heard all this and scoffed at him. And again, the scoff is coming from where? The children of the world. Uh, that's... No, this is not how the way, how things work. Uh, then he said to them, You like uh, to appear righteous in public, but God knows your hearts. What this world honors is detestable in the sight of God. Worldly riches and all of the uh, tinsel that covers over 
are truly decrepit natures. Okay, let's run with the parable. What do we learn here? Yeah, this, this is uh, it's interesting. A, a, a big part of it pivots on uh, just how you regard the ma uh, the uh, manager's actions to um, yeah. uh, fifty percent of the olive oil, twenty percent of the wheat. Yes, you did, um, and so forth, but not necessarily. Okay. <laughs> We don't know the structure of the deal, okay? It could be that he had a vested interest in each of those sales. It could be that he was being paid by a commission or some sort of a fee arrangement where his money was tied up in the deal as well. So that uh, what he was giving away may have been his portion of the deal. Now, why would he do a thing like that? He's about to be unemployed to ingratiate himself to these people, at the same time, he's cleaning up the record books for his, the employer who's, who's firing him. Um, so he's not handing off a can of worms when he, when he gets canned from his job, when he's finally uh, evicted from his job, he may still have um, good relationships all around. And that's what he needs to make it in the world. He needs to have people who, and, if you think about it, he's stealing from his employer to give to these uh, these other people. Um, are they going to welcome into it? Would you welcome a thief into a, your home? If you, you know that. So that really doesn't work too well. I mean, this is a, a different take on things, but it could very well be. I mean, uh, we don't know the details of uh, these transactions, so That's it's true. impossible to classify it as uh, thievery. After all, the the uh, owner of the business is uh, commending the guy. You're going to commend the guy for stealing even more from you? I mean, the, the charge in the first place is that he wasted his employer's money. Now he's stealing from him. He's going to give him a bigger uh, uh, pr uh, praise report or uh, a better uh, review of his overall work. Doesn't make sense. So. Uh, but that really kind of, don't want to get too sidelined here. The point is that people of the world have a way, are, are better versed in handling worldly affairs than the children of light. That's right. And it's true, there's, we have a saying, that, saying in the church, there's no sense. Be, uh, uh, so, but the thing is that we have a dishonest manager being fired. And... Um, but the people, see, also there's a thief thing. Thieves, <laughs> thieves think that whatever they plan is going to work out good. Look, at I'll steal more from my master, and then I will be better off with the people who know that I'm a thief. But the thief mind isn't, isn't, isn't rational. Like, the thief thinks, if I just give stolen property to other people that I'll be in higher regard in their in their brain when in fact like you just said no if you have a thief in your house he's going to steal from you if you're dishonest in a little thing you're going to be dishonest in a big thing right. and and there's some people who doubt that that said okay I wouldn't be dishonest for five dollars but I'd be dishonest for a million dollars and maybe who knows but the idea is so the, one of my favorite stories about this is a, a young man went to work in a cleaner, um, a, 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 not a laundry mat, but the guy that does pressing and all that, cleaner, clothes cleaner. And uh, he, he went to his bosses and he said, well, this is Mr. Um, Zawinski's uh, pants and it had a nickel in it. Can we make sure that it gets back to Mr. Zawinski? And the two bosses looked at each other. And he was told, the young man was told later on, that was your test. They put that nickel in your pocket to see if you'd be honest with a nickel. Because mm -hmm. if you were honest with a nickel, they could trust you with the, with the process. If you weren't honest with a the nickel, they instantly knew that you were yeah. a thief. And mm -hmm. so, and overcoming the reputation of being a thief, New Testament example of how do you tell if a thief is not a thief? Mm -hmm. And the answer is, it's not because he's not stealing at this minute. That does not make him not a thief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's probably planning his next B&E. B sure. But a thief is one who gets saved, gets a job. A thief who is no longer a thief, sorry, is one who gets saved, gets a job, and gives money to the poor. And then you know that his 
fiefdom, that his thievery in his heart has been overcome by the grace of God. Sure. And yep. so here we have a dishonest man making dishonest gain, and maybe not as dishonest as the scripture tells us, okay, but still a dishonest man getting fired, and but the world thinks different than the gospel. And, oh, and yeah. what you... And, there are people with serious wealth who are an incredible blessing to the kingdom of God. Absolutely. They bless, and then they bless, and they yep. bless. Yep. Um, uh, Convoy of Hope, every dime you submit to them, gets covered directly into the ministry. Where, because they have, they, have, um, they have supporters who fund the whole process of, of fundraising. And um, what a cool thing that is. Mm -hmm. And you think about how, how amazing that some charities, the fundraiser takes 80%. You think, mm. that's, that's thievery to me. <laughs> that's thievery to me. Yeah. And so, so the world that you see things in terms of what can I gain out of this? Mm -hmm. um, nobody will know if I steal this money. Uh, nobody will know if I'm dishonest on this thing or that thing. Nobody will know. And the answer is there is one who knows. And then to that. And <laughs> what what we do what we do in private comes out in public. Mm -hmm. uh, we 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 find this on political end, both on the Dems and the Republicans. What they have done that is dishonest eventually and, and we could argue not quickly enough, but eventually comes to light and you think, Wow, is that embarrassing? Yeah. Wow, well, is that embarrassing? So it's not <laughs> fact is they they relish many people on the you know I'm not gonna name names or anything but uh, let's say many. relish the idea of getting away with it that's right that's the, that's really the thrill of it for them that's to right. get away with the thievery to talk people out of you know, to use your money mm -hmm. to buy votes for themselves yes to buy vote and to get into office <laughs> to come up with things like an expanded IRS to take more money from you. Mm -hmm. I mean, that this, this is something, I hate to say it, but there are people that actually, not saying the whole party, but there are people that actually relish that thought. Right, right. And, um, you know, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Absolutely. You think about if you don't have somebody reining you in. But as a Christian, we need to also have some sort of accountability one with another. Like, um, you know, you, it's so easy to judge harshly, but you see people with a massive car payment and they're living in a hovel and you just think, well, why? Because the car is the show thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody sees them in the car and not everybody comes to their home. Yeah. So, so how do you, how do you handle wealth? Well, you honor God first. You honor God with tithe, which is 10% off the top. Um, offerings, which is Convoy of Hope and other charities that have value to you, and then and then the alms and the alms for the poor or the guy on the side of the road, and you give him you know a thirty um, thirty gram protein shake, and it, you know you you take care of the things so that money doesn't become. It's so easy to obsess about money. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Dear God, forgive me. Kathy's always like, well, God will take care of it. And she's right. Hi, Kath. <laughs> uh, and, but the, and, and God has come through over 66 years of my life um, amazingly. Just um, um, Kathy's mom died and I got cancer. And after the cancer, her money covered my cancer bill. And it was just like, um, whoa, how amazing thinking that you got all this and all of a sudden this happens mm -hmm. and then you think we weren't prepared for my cancer we were but god was prepared for our cancer my mm -hmm. cancer so and if you're not faithful with other people's things why should you be trusted with things of your own what an amazing culturally universally true mm -hmm. if we can't trust you with that nickel in the pocket then how can i trust you running the business. How can I trust you at all? Um, and trust is really hard to regain. If you've blown up somebody's trust, whether on purpose or not, yep. 
even if you've blown up somebody's trust and not done anything wrong, it still takes time and 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 healing and forgiveness yep. to get to get reconnected. And you're always just a little more cautious than you would be. Um, and people are always a little more cautious about you henceforth. The, yes. the accusation is enough. That's right. Uh, to to set your whole life on a different uh, tangent. Yeah. That's, we see that happening in the news too. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the way of the world. It is. So that takes us to 13. 13. Lord still speaking. Yeah. Red letter. No one can serve two masters. For you'll ha uh, hate one and love the other. You'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both uh, God and be enslaved to money. What an okay, interesting way that. to frame that. Yeah. What an interesting... So, and, and, and nobody thinks, I'll hate God when I love money. Mm. Nobody thinks that. They'll just think, you think I'll get money you. and I'll still love God. Yeah. You can't do both. I'm going to love God even more if I have money. Yeah. That's a... Uh, and that's the answer is... is <laughs> and the answer is no. Yeah. If you... I mean, the guy that has... Certainly you're going to be thankful if you have more money. Amen. There's no question about that. But... Uh, if your love is a love for God is contingent on loving money or having money, uh, you, you've got some development to go through. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. So it, it's not as good. as the spiral of loving money. Now, I'm not telling you don't work. I'm not telling you don't uh, don't pay your bills. I'm not telling you any of that. I'm just telling you do what you should do every day and honor God with what you do every day. You know, you think, and Noah, I mean, the, he's speaking this into the disciples, but he's referencing, he's referencing the Pharisees and, and Sadducees and the, and the people who love money. We just saw them in the, um, in the 15th chapter. Mm -hmm. I mean, it went repeatedly here. So remember that Jesus is going to the cross. He hasn't had the triumphant entry yet, he hasn't had, but his mindset is there, and he's telling the folks, don't let money own you. God doesn't mind you having money, he does mind money having you, and so... Yeah, um, that's, that's a big part of the message. Amen. Just to round out this section, this chapter is really divided into two major topics. This is one, that's a, uh, and the other is um, going to deal with the afterlife, and that one, if you think... This was controversial. <laughs> That's right. But we're, we've got uh, we've we've had our issues with that. But uh, just to fill uh, round up this not. chapter, let's um, forty nine. We've got uh, a minute. A minute. Okay. So yeah, to uh, continue on verse fourteen, uh, the Pharisees who dearly loved mo their money heard all this and scoffed at him. Okay. So this is uh, this is the context. Then he said to them. You like to appear righteous in public, but God knows your hearts. What this world honors is detestable Ouch. in the sight of God. <laughs> Verse 16. So, Until John the Baptist, the law of Moses, and the messages of the prophets were your God. The law has lost its force. It's easier for heaven and earth to disappear than for the smallest point of God's law to be overturned. It says thou shalt not steal. That's what it means. It, it still does. does. So uh, verse, let, one more verse and we've got this rounded out. Okay. For example, a man who divorces his wife marries someone else. Now, this is, this is actually getting off another tambo, uh, uh, slight tangent here, but uh, just to complete this section. Uh, example, a man who divorces his wife and marries someone else commits adultery. And anyone who marries a woman divorced from her husband commits adultery. That's like a topic unto itself. It is. And, um, but the uh, next section deals with uh, uh, the death of uh, uh, Lazarus and the rich man and so forth. Wanted to get this far with it today, but this, uh, to put this into context, how do we put um, the, the topic of adultery within the context of all that we've just talked about? Hmm. Which will give us uh, a jumping place for tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> all right. Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you that you provide resources for us in ways that just are staggering. We thank you, O oh Lord, that we can be faithful with the nickel and we can be faithful with the much. 
We'd ask that you would, that you would transform us so that we can make a difference in a desperate, dying, dangerous, furious, angry, frustrated world. In Christ's name, amen. Yes, Lord, thank you again. Thank you for your more, uh, that we may have these things to ponder. Um, as the scripture says, work out your own salvation with fear and to look into. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hopefully develop our lives. We pray for your direction, of course. Mm -hmm. We want to develop our lives, and we ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Blessings to you all. Amen to that. Bye for now.